Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, John Furrier. Hi, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and we are reporting with exclusive coverage of Amazon reInvent 2015 for the big news, the big announcement, the big Internet of Things cloud, IOT it's called in the industry. I'm here with Len Gore, uh, senior architect, head of architecture at Amazon. Uh, the big news here is IOT. You guys are doing some amazing things you've just released today out on stage. What are you showing here? What is Internet of Things that's taking the world by storm? Uh, what is Internet of Things and why is it important? Yeah, What's no, the big announcement? John, it's fantastic to be here. We're introducing AWS IoT today, which is a collection of 11 different services that make it easier and simpler for developers to create the next generation of connected devices that will change the way we interact with everyday products and services. IoT, Internet of Things, sounds very Star Trek, very futuristic, very Star Wars. What is it all about? It's, it seems too geeky and too far out there, but is it reality today? And what are some of the things that you guys are announcing? And what are you guys going to do to make this a reality? It is geeky, uh, but it is here today. And you know, the thing is really about these small embedded devices that are low powered, relatively cheap, and you can put these in many devices around there. For example, you can put them in wearable technology that's used in personal responders. So when police respond to something, the uh, GPS, heart rate monitor, what's happening around them can be recorded in real time process in the cloud, which leads to a better, safer outcome. You can uh, use it in things such as fire alarms, so that when you're building a building, no matter where you've got wiring, you can just stick these to the wall, and when someone pulls that switch, it's communicating over wireless networks, and that allows you to have flexible environments as you go around. Even to starter kits like this, which is a product from Intel and Seed, which is a developer kit which has an Intel Edison chip within it, collection of sensors out of the box, we actually got a demo that we'll be able to show you how these sensors are being used within a greenhouse uh, later. All right, so explain how all this works, and, and break it down. You got 11 services, you have an ecosystem. Is there an easy button? Is it just like, just beginning? Is it all about developing new software? How does it work? Explain to the folks well, how it works. Starting from today, you'll be able to go to Amazon.com, buy one of these starter kits. Uh, if you're a Prime member, you'll actually have it delivered within an hour, depending which city you're in. And then you'll be able to go to the Amazon Web Services console, sign up with an account, and start using the AWS IoT services. And those 11 services will take care of things from the gateway services, message brokering, storage, security, uh, a lot of different complex parts that developers in the past have had to reinvent the wheel on. It's a kind of undifferentiated heavy lifting that everybody was having to solve again and again and again. What AWS IoT allows you to do is focus on what the outcome that you're trying to develop is. We see kids bring a clock to school that they made and they get yeah. kicked out and they get arrested. Now it's a big rage. The maker culture is really re yep. uh, high end right now. And what does this mean for Amazon? Is this a new class of developers? And how do they get involved? So really what it is about Amazon is enabling you know, the tens of millions of devices that people are going to create and put out there in devices such as washing machines, automatic uh, electronic locks on your door, through to pet feeders. And all these devices are going to be communicating in real time about what was the last activity did, is the dog eating their food, how much have they eaten, do you need to order more food, deliver that through to you without you having to stress and worry about it as well. So this is going to evolve into the millions and millions and millions of devices out there. They're going to become ubiquitous in everything we do. So I have to ask you the question. We saw Airbnb, companies like Airbnb use Amazon. Uh, those developers created great value. Yeah. This kind of creates kind of the machine value, the tinkerer, the builder, the maker culture. People are building yeah. stuff. What does this new developer look like and how are they going to use this stuff and how does Amazon That's a great play? question. The new developer is kind of a hybrid of somebody who's a bit of a craftsman, a bit of a, they're going to be dealing with hardware, electronics like this, uh, other machines around it. But they're also going to have software development skills as well and using the cloud to do some of that heavy processing that is required behind the scenes. You can imagine developing one device is one thing, but having tens of thousands or even a million of these out there in the field all sending data all the time in real time. That takes some serious computing power and analytics work to understand what's happening behind the scenes and be able to give insights back to those customers. So what is this kit here? I just ordered this on uh, Amazon, obviously. Um, gets delivered to my house. What is this uh, So this is kit? a kit that's been put together with Amazon, Intel, and Seed, which uh, has all of these components that you see in front of you here. So it's the Edison embedded controller, which is great for Internet of Things. And it comes with a number of sensors, light sensors, motion sensors, relays, servo motors, dimmers, 
uh, temperature and humidity control. So using those inputs, you can create a machine that can respond to the environment around it and then trigger action. So for example, when we go into the greenhouse, we'll be able to see how the greenhouse responds when the humidity or temperature goes too high, which is really important for if you're trying to grow plants. Some plants you know, will die if the temperature gets too high for them. So how does a, a developer actually interface with this? Do they write software? Do they get all this hardware with it? What do they have to do? What is the new paradigm for the developer? So the new paradigm for a developer is really easy. They have this, it has a really nice user interface that they can use to start writing some software in. On the back end with Amazon, you can use a GUI, you can click and point. What's interesting with some of these services, and especially what we're announcing today, you can actually develop an entire Internet of Things environment, including the web environment, without even provisioning a single server at all. You can actually go serverless in the new world and use higher level services to connect all the pieces together. And the big showcase behind us is the greenhouse. What is that all about? Explain the, the reality of you guys built out a greenhouse. Explain well, let's, that. Uh, let's go over and have a look, shall we? Okay. Len, we were just talking about the Internet of Things yeah. and how the creativity and the entrepreneurial and the tinkerer, the builder, taking the startup kit, having software development kit, and using Amazon Cloud can create new things. What is this? This looks like yeah. uh, a homegrown greenhouse, but fully functional. Describe what, where we are. Yeah, so we're in a greenhouse, and uh, that kit we just saw from Intel and Seed, we're taking the devices from that. There's some uh, Intel Edison chips up in the ceiling here. There's lighting strips. We've got temperature, humidity, soil moisture, uh, lighting sensors that are measuring everything that's happening in this greenhouse every second, and it's uploading that data in real time to the cloud where we've got rule-based systems that are looking at, is the temperature too high? If the temperature is too high, it'll open roof vents or turn the fan on behind me. If the humidity is too low, it can turn a humidifier on. And what this is doing is allows you to control the idea environment to grow plants. And people like to grow some pretty expensive rare plants and being able to keep them in those tolerances is really important to people. So it's hard to understand and visualize what Internet of Things is. Obviously, it's a, you know, a lot of stuff connected to the Internet, new technology, but you actually guys constructed yeah. and instrumented a fully functional greenhouse yeah. with all the parts that we just saw. You yeah. got a little dashboard yeah, here, so it's futuristic. Give us a demo, what is, what is, give us a demo so of what's happening. One of the interesting things about this is while this is actually all automated and using the cloud in the background, it also allows us as humans to interact with it. So we can interact with it on this tablet here, we can see in real time what the temperature is, we can see here what the humidity is doing, lighting, etc. So you can control this. Even if I was away, I can see what's happening in my farm. But what's even more exciting for me is the fact that I can control this via my voice. And so we actually have Amazon Echo here, which is a, another Internet of Things enabled device. And we can actually ask it to do things. So for example, Alexa, turn on the fan. Okay. And we'll see as the fan behind me will turn on. I've got a nice cool breeze coming, etc. Alexa, turn off the fan. Okay. And so you can control things like this, and all of the data that was happening there is coming through to the tablet, so I can double check uh, things. I can even turn the lights off. Alexa, turn off the overhead lamps. Okay. And so I can control the lighting as well. Alexa, turn on the overhead lamps. Okay. And so we can see this drives for that next generation developer very easy to use interface. You don't need to be a tech specialist or a geek to control what is actually a pretty complex What's the impact trigger. of this for the developer and the, and the economy? What's the impact of all this technology? So the impact for a developer is about actually making it a lot easier. And we're seeing that the age of developers is actually decreased. We're seeing kids these days uh, using this technology to create fantastical things based on their imagination and not being held back by some of the rules and restrictions that us that have been around for a little bit longer think that technology restricts us. So you're seeing a great uh, deal of freedom. As a consumer though, what's really interesting, you can imagine just with a greenhouse, if you can get better control of humidity and temperature and lighting, if you're using this for food production, that density of food produced per square acre for farmers is a really important thing as we try to solve the uh, you know, hunger problems across the world. Technology like this will change how we look at agriculture. So there's a lot of automation in here. I noticed that if the humidity goes up, you can open up windows, close yep. windows, based upon the environmental conditions. I'll see a great demo. Mm -hmm. You mentioned other businesses. So you see, you guys see this happening for all businesses? I think that every single device, every single use case can benefit by a smarter interaction with the environment around you to either give you better insights or actually make life easier for you by you know, ordering different products based on your consumption of it. And we've actually got another demo I can show you. We'll show you through some of the real world devices that are out there already today that consumers can use. Great, let's go check that out. Excellent. Hi, I'm John Furrier. We are here, exclusive coverage of Amazon's big announcement, the Internet of Things platform, here inside the floor, inside the booth, getting all the action from Len Gore, uh, head of architecture at Amazon. 
We're here showing the demos. We just saw the greenhouse. We just saw the the, uh, the kit, the developer kit. Len, we'll get the consumer and the industrial wow. examples here. Take us through what's going on here. Let's talk about the industrial aspects and then we'll talk about the consumer. So I've been working with one of our partners, Sealed Air, who's had uh, hand sanitizers throughout the convention. What's interesting is as you use the hand sanitizer, it's actually a Internet of Things enabled device again that reports back through AWS IoT about every time someone uses that device. And that's interesting on two different levels. One is the consumption model behind knowing that they take roughly about a thousand shots before they need to replace. So when they get to 700, it can automatically order replacement uh, hand sanitizer automatically. But what's even more interesting is if you extend this throughout into something like a restaurant, for example, which shift is better at cleaning its hands and hygiene, for example? So you can start using this information that's derived from a simple device such as a hand sanitizer to start modeling very different uh, usage behaviors. So the benefits of just making sure it's, it's full and working you yep. got compliance data, you have usage data, that data rolls up into some sort of supply chain. Yeah, it's into a central management system that allows them to do reporting based on, I mean, you can imagine in a restaurant, if that hand sanitizer runs out, I don't want to be eating in that restaurant. So that's an example of a probe, an embedded device, you can yeah. put that in manufacturing, you can put it in, obviously cars, you're seeing self-driving cars, everything's Absolutely. happening now is instrumented. Yeah, you can put it in video systems, uh, enabled devices, even fridges, trash cans, you can put it anywhere you can think of where there's some type of consumption of resources being used. So the mobile phone and the smartphone really got the consumers jazzed about what a mobile device is and connected device. Yeah. So what's the consumer example? Show us what's happening here so, to bring it down to the real world. So these are some real live examples today that are being used. We have Britta, a uh, world class leader in filtration technology, being able to make these jugs with the filters in it. But as you use them, those filters get clogged up over time. This device is smart enough to know how much water has been poured through it and will automatically reorder a Britta filter when it gets past its use by days using uh, replacement services. We have the Amazon Dash buttons, which you can see here branded with different brands. You can put these throughout your home wherever you're using that product. And as you notice your supply is getting low, just by simply pressing that button, Amazon knows that it will, you can see it's lit up there, it will automatically replace uh, an order replacement service for you. So that's talking to the device, the, the, the consumable device? Well, it's and actually those... talking straight through your Wi Fi network, uh, uploading to the Amazon cloud doing a whole bunch of computing, knowing who you are, and then knowing what product to order, and then shipping that product back out to you to your device. So you're seeing a complete end-to-end -end supply chain management there at the press of a button. So Amazon's now connecting to the devices that connect to the products that help Amazon ship more products. Yeah, it's about making your life easier as a consumer. I mean, I don't want to be tracking how many jugs of water I've poured out of my Brita supplier. This is the evolution of this device where I had to push the button to this being self-aware about its usage and being able to do that on my behalf. Great. Okay, so this is a special device you're giving away. Share with the folks what this is. Yeah, so John, this is, uh, again, a version of the Amazon Dash button that we're giving out to 2,000 attendees at reInvent. What this allows developers to do is to start experimenting with how they can interact with their own IT applications at the click of a button. So we're really excited to see the ideas and the innovation that 2,000 different developers are going to be able to use such a simple device. So you're giving that out to all the developers? Uh, to two, the first 2,000 developers. Uh, uh, here. That's awesome, always so. giving away the goodies. Uh, what else are you showing here? So another really important thing is in the world of health. Uh, you know, when if you're doing things like taking your blood glucose level all the time, Gmate's a great example where you can take your blood glucose level, touch the strip, it's connected to your smartphone, it'll update that data to the cloud, but it also knows how many strips you've used. So as your strips start getting low, it'll automatically order a replacement and so you don't run out. Imagine not being able to take your blood glucose level can be quite serious for some people. So this again, yeah. makes it easier and safer for consumers. It's kind of like a cell phone. I never know what a phone number is. I used to memorize all the phone yeah. numbers. Now I don't even know my, my kids' phone numbers. But this is another way, another example. What else are you showing over here? Uh, this is my personal favorite, which is PetNet, uh, which is an automatic feeding station for your dog. And not only as the dog can eat it, it'll automatically replenish, but it knows how much your dog is eating, which is fantastic. I had a big dog that used to eat a lot, and that will automatically reorder pet food from Amazon and have it shipped to your door so your pet never goes hungry. So when you're on vacation, will it actually load the, load the food well, into it? Will a drone come in and do that? Well, we'll see where the next generation <laughs> of these things get to. Uh, Len, what else are you guys showing behind? You've got the wash machine and those other are there sports examples that you guys are talking about here? Share what else you have yeah, so here. So look, we're already seeing some evolution. So I mean, this was the first generation of being able to use push to click ordering. But what we're seeing is we did a partnership with Tide and General Electric, and they're now embedding that same technology straight into the washing machine itself. And you can see here we have a package of Tide. What you can do is just pour that whole container into your wash machine. And then as you wash cycles, 
that machine knows how much detergent it's using. As it gets low, it'll automatically reorder the detergent. So all you need to do is when that package arrives, tip it back into the washing machine, and you can just focus on washing the clothes. It's also internet enabled, so as that wash cycle completes, you can get an alert on your mobile phone that you should put it in the dryer machine. Some other real world examples have been in the sports industry. Nike's here, we saw some things around Nike. Yeah. What is happening in the sports business kind of brings us down to the consumer level. Yeah, so internet things is just pervasive into everything. In sports, what we're seeing is uh, embedded technology into things like sneakers, uh, wearable sport technology. One of the ones that I think is really good is headbands, for example, that as players take hits on the field, actually measures the G-forces that they've experienced. And based on that real-time data, doctors on the field can actually make a play call and say, actually, John, you've taken a massive hit, you're actually probably concussed, let's bring you off the field, even though you may not be showing any symptoms of it. And over a career of a player, that leads to much healthier outcome for the players and more time on the game field for them, which when those athletes are being paid millions of dollars is really important to the clubs. Really breaking news here at Amazon reInvent. What's this all mean at the end of the day? for the consumers, for society, and businesses out there. What it really is about unlocking the next wave of innovation. You talked about mobile phones and how that changes. We had smart devices, we connected. Imagine what the next generation is going to be like when all the devices around us are able to interact with us, monitor the environment, and make it simpler for developers, so make it even easier for the next generation of kids out there with those bright ideas to develop applications in the world without having to jump through lots of hoops to do that at low cost. That's Len Gore here at Amazon reInvent, breaking down the Internet of Things, and really this is the next generation developer community that will be exploding on the scene as more devices are connected to the Internet. We're going to see a wave of innovation from kids making clocks and bringing them to school and getting arrested to maker fairs. We're going to see a slew of innovation. Business, every business will be instrumented with devices. You're going to see a lot more action here. And obviously the cloud enables this and Amazon brings that to the table. It's going to be exciting to see how Amazon re reacts and what their competitors will do. Obviously Amazon wins, they can ship more products, happier customers, and overall great innovation with the Internet of Things. Bring it down to the consumer level, not just for business. I'm John Furrier reporting exclusive coverage of Amazon Web Services reInvent. Thanks for watching.